Hey Dude Facts followers, this is Josh here. I wanted to let you know that the recording of this episode took place inside of our new air quote studio. We're still working to get it set up and some of the sound is not as high quality as we would normally like it to be, especially in the first part of the podcast. Stick it out though, things really improve around minute 28. I think you're going to love this episode. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Dude Facts Podcast. We're four guys who in the past all served in the same youth ministry together. Now, more than 10 years later, 10 years older, but not really 10 years more mature, we felt it was time to join forces once again. So now we create weekly podcasts dealing with pop culture, ministry, and church life, and mixed all throughout as a healthy dose of the humor you would only expect from old youth pastors. So if you love Jesus, the local church, and laughter, you're going to fit right in. We encourage you to sit back, relax, grab a nice cold Dr. Pepper, and enjoy this week's episode of the Dude Facts Podcast. All right, welcome to uh, the 53rd episode of the Dude Facts Podcast, which means it's year two, number one. I can't wait till, yeah, yeah, it's number two, number one. That's pretty exciting. Thanks for joining us this week. Um, we. As you heard in the opener, we are going to be talking about um, people in times when we might begin to doubt whether what we say we believe is enough to really secure our eternity. Um, and that is something that a lot of people go through. So we'll be getting to that uh, in just a moment, but we do want to welcome you guys. And we are sans Granticles again this evening. Um, here's the deal. Here's the deal. The three of us are is really fully... One? Well, yeah, it is. The three of us are, are really fully committed to this thing. And for some reason, Grant is really fully committed to pastoring his church. <laughs> so He acts like he lives on the other side of the country or something. It's I know. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know what's up with it. I mean, it's two hours earlier there. He's got more time left in his day than we do. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's not like he's going to bed super early. No. Or maybe he is. I don't know. Uh, you know, he does He does have two kids, some animals, and a pickle now. You dang pickle He's one? He might be. Yeah, the gherkin. Yeah. We, need it, we do need to determine if it's a gherkin or a dill. Yeah, that's a big deal. It is. Or a big gherkin. <laughs> so we're, we're going to, a little bit later, um, actually reveal some names that mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. Dude Facts audience came up with for Grant's film. It's exciting. Uh, Oh man, yeah. So we got some good stuff coming. We're going to discuss pickle names. Um, we've got the highly anticipated NCAA March Madness Dude Facts bracket. Oh, um, second annual. The second annual. Yeah. Yes. March Madness. Too bad the P oh, is not in. The P ran out. Yeah, they did. Yeah, that's too bad. They ran so, out and lost to a school that's named after a chief in North Carolina. <laughs> or, expensive or a really expensive hat. <laughs> yeah. My dad had a Stetson. Yeah. And um, when he when he passed, we're going through his stuff. And uh, I knew they weren't cheap, but the re he kept it in the box. I only saw him wear it once, and the receipt was in there. And holy cow, like he could have sent me to college again, you know. Yeah. You know, for at least one hour, credit hour he could have. But yeah, they're not cheap. Believe it or not, I own a Stetson. Do you? So I had to buy it because I was in a cavalry unit oh. uh, back in 2014 to 16, and you were required to buy a Stetson. Uncle Sam didn't provide that for you? They did not. Oh, yeah, they're spending all the money repairing I, our roads. I, so. I, I have to pay to like get the thing reshaped and cleaned like, every time I buy a board hmm. piece. Like, yeah. hmm. So when I asked Thank you, to my Thank wife, you, Thank you, Uncle. I had to get it cleaned. <laughs> Yeah, did I, <laughs> I think I uh, specifically requested it because you told me you had that in like your normal gray, and you said, "No, please wear the Stetson." <laughs> oh, I, I didn't remember the name. Yeah, no, no, I did not have a clean shirt. Not that gay gray. <laughs> <laughs> this is a straight wedding joke. Rip, you didn't, I could be misremembering that, but I just took I took the pictures. I forgot my wedding. Well, I mean, I I, I should have wore it. It'd be a lot cooler than the gray. I wouldn't. You should wear the beret on podcast. I could. 
at some point. We could. It's out there, right? Oh, well, we got the music for it. <laughs> yeah, because we're during, during halftime. <laughs> <we're done again. laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, I've got some fun stuff coming up in just a little bit. Um, but let's jump into to this conversation. We, I think it's something that um, really all of us walk through in some way. When, especially if you if you grow up in church, there's this thing that people talk about, like um, as you begin to own your faith, you know, take it for yourself. Because uh, a lot lot of, lot of us, um, I know, well, all of us in this room, you know, we grew up going to church, Christian families, um, understood uh, faith at a young age, and so at some point you go through that process of, okay, well, do I really believe this for myself, or is it just because of the way I was raised? Um, but then there's another end of that where maybe you really get into a season of your life where you wonder if you have believed in the right way or your faith is, is real, um, or if maybe you're just didn't quite get it all taken care of in that baptism or whatever, and you begin to doubt, uh, your faith, not Christianity. Um, but if your faith is genuine, if it's authentic, if it's real and, um, I know I've had a season like that in my life, and we wanted to share some of our stories with that, our own, our own experience. Um, and instead of putting one of you guys on the spot, I'll just go ahead and jump into that for me. Um, I, I dealt with it really early 20s. Um, and one of the things, it was actually early First Baptist years. Um, I don't, Jeff, I'm not sure if you were there yet at that time, but um, the church was doing this evangelism campaign. And um, where they were asking everybody to write their story. And it was based off the three questions, basically, of what was your life like before you knew Jesus? How'd you come to know him? And then how's it different now? And um, I, I don't really remember life before knowing Jesus. Um, you know, my, my story is one of those that um, now that I've grown to kind of understand it in, in a clearer way, I'm, I'm very thankful for it. But in that season, I... I I was started thinking, man, I don't have like this before and after. And I'd never really questioned that before um, because there wasn't a, well, I was, I was this way. And then there was this moment and then I was different. Um, when I was five or six is, I remember clearly um, sitting with my parents in my bedroom. It was a Sunday night after church. I don't know what had happened at church, what we had talked about, but I started asking these questions. And... Um, you know, my parents walked me through understanding the gospel. And then I remember I was in the pastor's office the next day or so. Uh, I talked to him and then, then I was baptized. Um, but in the early tw in my early 20s, um, this was probably, well, maybe mid-20s, probably around 25, um, when this was going on at the church and I was struggling with it, I actually called my mom. And I remember standing in like the, the high school auditorium. And I called my mom. I was like, Tim, can you tell me about this this time, like, that I seem to really get it or whatever. And she, she said, yeah, you ask really great questions and you seem to understand and have a good grasp. And, and that was really, that was helpful for me, helpful for me in that moment. But it was sometime after that shortly on Tuesday nights, we would do visitation with uh, a deacon at the church. And, um, and I was with one of them, an older gentleman. I, I wish I could remember who it was because we were talking through this thing the church was doing. And, and I said, you know, I'm, I'm having a hard time writing this out. I said, I, I'm even like wondering, like, have I missed something or whatever? And it was apparently one I didn't mind opening up with. And um, yeah, I, so mine was a little bit earlier as far as the doubt seeking. And I think the more, it's funny, I think the more reformed that I've become, the less I've doubted yeah. because it's taken the, onus off of me and what I've done and put it on Jesus, which is rightly so. Um, it's Jesus' work on the cross. It's not a magic, it's not a magic formula that, you know, I said this, this correct prayer or did it the right way or everything fell in line. And that's why I'm saved. But I was saved at age seven. And I remember my cousin being saved before me. And watching her, um, knowing what repentance was supposed to be, this idea of she's given her life to Christ, she's trusted him, she's now turning and following him. And I remember even kind of watching her, and this is before I, I had made a decision for Christ, and, and seeing her 
actually struggle, like argue with her parents one time. And I thought, wow, she still struggles. And I remember having that thought as like a six or seven year old, but, um, eventually I knew, you know, I, I wanted to follow Jesus. I wanted to do this and uh, put my, my faith and trust in him, did that and talked to my parents and talked to the pastor and was baptized and, and just began to live life. And it, it's interesting because we do put so much emphasis on this on the story or the or the event. Like you need to remember this event as if it's just sort of this end all be all event. And for some people, I think they do have maybe a Paul Damascus Road type experience mm-hmm. or Saul of Damascus Road. Uh, but for for others, it, I, I don't think that's the case. And uh, I I go back to what are all the things that God has saved me from by me trusting in Christ at such an early age. Mm-hmm. Because if maybe I, I didn't come to Christ until I was 25, you know, how different my life would be. And also, you know, who knows where my life would have gone. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe God saved me at that age, you know, really as, as another act of mercy to keep me from all of these things. And so, I, I didn't have much of a problem with my story, knowing that my story wasn't, you know, you might think is as exciting as everybody else's because it's not like I was a drug dealer or anything like that. But um, I did doubt when, and I think it's natural, and even being a youth pastor, seeing this with kids that we ministered to, uh, when I was in, in high school and uh, going to all these youth retreats and denials and all this, and, and you're hearing preaching and there's gospel presentations specifically, sometimes at some of these conferences, they're very emotional gospel presentations yeah. where, you know, it seemed like kids were going and getting saved like every single time there was a youth event. Same kids getting saved yeah. like eight times. And uh, you saw it again as youth pastors, the same kid every single time coming down. But there always seemed to be this little doubt in my mind, like, did I really know what I was doing when I was seven years old? Was it genuine? And I remember talking to um, one of the adult leaders one time, that's probably 15 or 16, and I, and I was asking him those questions, and he said, you know what, um, absolutely you could have known what you're doing at age seven. For a seven-year-old, mm-hmm. you didn't understand it as a 15-year-old or 16-year-old, but you understood it as a seven-year-old. And uh, that gave me a little bit of peace, thinking, okay, you know, I, I, I do know that I trusted Christ at age seven. But again, I was putting more of the onus back on me. And uh, as time went on and I got into seminary, I remember Dr. Fish talking about his evangelism class. And uh, he was not a very reformed person. He was very much, um, you know, and, and part of his issue, I think, with the reformed church was that their evangelism wasn't mm-hmm. a priority. And, uh, but, but he even talked about how um, you know, Christians doubt their salvation. And he went back to um, the fact that there's nothing we can do. I mean, we, there's nothing we can do to earn salvation. There's nothing we can, there's not a magic formula that we can say or pray. And um, he said, it's all dependent on, on the work of Jesus. And, and it was just like, it, it sort of made that connection in my brain um, that, you know, anytime I had worried or doubted, it was always about, did I do enough? Is it my performance? And, I, and obviously the times where I doubted the most were times when I had sinned and messed up and thought, crap, am I really saved? And uh, what it was, it was really the enemy coming in and, and trying to make me think it was about my performance when it's about Jesus. And Sort of a side note on that, I don't want to go too far down this. I also grew up, uh, I grew up Baptist, but I also grew up around some people and teachers that also had sort of the, not really the belief that you could lose your salvation, but they had um, their doubts of whether or not that was a real thing. So I remember adults saying, you know what, you might be able to lose your salvation. We don't know. It was like they were wrestling with it and they were, and because they were in, in saying this, I was taking it in as a kid and thinking, man, can, can we lose our salvation? And, you know, you read John 10, 28, you know, no one will snatch them out of my hand. Um, I, I remember really understanding that verse as probably a teenager. 
you're leading the young adult. And uh, that gave me a lot of comfort because, hey, I, I've given my life to Christ. I've trusted him. I've followed him. His work on the cross is all we need for salvation. And that's what I believe in. Thus, you know, I am a, a Christian. And, and I've never really doubted, probably since, um, you know, maybe late teens, early 20s. Um, and, and maybe part of that too, especially going back to the reform part, is it's like, you know, Jesus has saved me. I'm glad it's not dependent upon my performance because, yeah, uh, I'd be screwed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I go back to probably a similar time in my life um, with Jeff, just, you know, kind of being growing up in church. I was, you know, I gave a lot to Christ in around seven, eight years old, got baptized, you know, went through the whole deal. Um, I think it was a VBS uh, night, or maybe like a, um, like a special event night at church. Um, but then, like as I got older, and especially into the youth ministry in my church, the um, the events and the, the conferences, the camps, you know, a, a lot of that, you know, Jeff, you talked about where there's a lot of emotional things happening. My, I was, I had this kind of confusion in that aspect because. Every time it was an event or something, I was that kid that was like, you know, oh, like, you know, something like, you know, I, I feel something. I'm, I need, you know, I need, I need to be saved. And and at a, at a certain point, as I got older and started to understand more, I was like, oh man, did I, did I really like have a life changing moment at seven years old? And um, as time went on, and as, as I met more people, and finally got someone, you know, that would disciple me and kind of helped me along. I found what I was missing was not that I wasn't saved. It was that I was missing that next step. I'm like, what do I do from here? And so I, once I had someone to kind of disciple me in that path in my life, that doubt went away. And I, I felt much more confident in my salvation and that, and that I had made a true, honest um, decision for the Lord. And the... Um, I think the, the biggest thing for me was just, you know, understanding that I had, uh, that the, my desire was not only fueled by these emotional events and altar calls and things, but also there was a, there was a desire inside of me and that was the spirits leading my life. I just didn't have direction for it. And then when I found that direction, it was what really put me on a more solid path. And I see that as I, as I went through uh, teenage year, adolescence, I went through some, um, tough times that I really see where God worked in my life. And as I you got older in my twenties, looking back on that is what helps me know that my salvation is, is real because I can see the evidence of it in my life. I do resonate with something that you said, Jeff, about, um, you know, what you've been saved from. Um, and that kind of gives you evidence. Like I, I've had that thought as well, just, Man, because I know how I struggle now with the spirit and um, and the restraint that he does bring. Um, like, and I can I can just tell because everything in me was like, oh, I really would like to do that, but I, there's no telling what kind of terrible person <laughs> all of us would be. Any of us would be not without him. Um, so, so what is it then? So we've shared some of our story. What is it that? maybe just in general for people might cause them to doubt that what they said they believed, the path they walked, you know, whatever that was earlier in their life to maybe doubt that that was sufficient for them. I think sin obviously causes us to, to doubt it. Um, you know, that, and part of that's because when we live in sin, we're, we're thinking, oh, are we really a redeemed individual? Um, somebody who is a new creation, somebody who has truly repented and is, is following after Jesus. And, um, you know, we, we've talked before, we even, I think, had disciple nows on the, the topic when we were youth pastors about forgetting your identity as that new creation. And, um, you know, that, that word kainos in Greek, it, it, it means new with respect to age. And so obviously that's where we get the term born again. But it, it's like, I've always thought about it as it's, it's like a, um, it's like resetting a video game. 
um, you know, at least an old school video game. You had the old school Super Mario Brothers. You reset it. You started all the way back at World One, and um, you you had three lives again. So if you were playing and you only had one life left, and you were in some other world, and you're like, oh, I made some mistakes, and you reset it, we're all the way back with all your lives left. Um, you know, when we become that new creation, that that slate is wiped clean, and so we have. Obviously, that um, clean slate with God because of Jesus, because God sees Jesus and, and not us. Um, and we are truly really that new creation. That's why the scripture appeals to that. But we forget that because when we sin, we fall right back into those same patterns. And I think in addition to that, and we've hinted at this too. Um, and this is probably another topic for another day. But I, I think in the church, sometimes we can be a little manipulative being honest when it comes to gospel presentation and I don't think it's always intentional I think because we focus so much on an event and um, we we because we want people to know Jesus and we want people to get saved sometimes the way that we present it is in a way of hey you've got to make this decision right now it, you've got to understand there's an event there's again we're putting onus on people and yes people do obviously proclaim and make testimony and make public their decisions and repent and turn to Jesus. But it, it's like we, we struggle finding that balance sometimes. And so, especially in youth, when you're already emotional and hormonal as a teenager, and then you're at an event where you're with your friends and you're away from parents and all these things are happening and there's like good looking girls sitting next to you and you're already like super intense. And then this emotional service comes and you're like, Oh my gosh, am I really saved? Um, and then there's sort of a, a, maybe a manipulative type, uh, gospel presentation. I, I think doubts start to creep in, in those moments. And so I, I think those are a few things and sometimes it's a perfect storm of all of them. Yeah. I think gospel presentations, and when, in regards to youth events specifically, yeah. I, in my historical experience, has been they focus a lot on the salvation aspect, and you know people who are non-believers, but they they don't usually have a direction or a thought in mind for students and youth who are already believers, and so they just kind of get roped into this you know gospel presentation, which is you know good to hear, but is not necessarily meant for them at this point in their, you know, their journey of faith. It's, you know, it's meant for people who are finding it new and then they're kind of at a loss and, you know, it is an emotional experience a lot of times and not all the time intentionally. Sometimes it's just the, the, you know, the story of the gospel is an emotional thing that can uh, change hearts. And I think that people feel that and then there's just, there's, you know, can be, doubt that creeps in because people don't know what to do with the feeling that they're bringing that because they're like, I'm already a Christian. I don't know what to, to do from here. So I definitely think that that can uh, affect people, especially at a young age. And, and Josh, you, you mentioned this too, talking about evangelism. Um, I, I think sometimes the way that we package evangelism or at least what it's supposed to look like, that can lead to doubt because we put so much focus on making the converts. When Jesus says, make disciples, and then Ryan, you talked about discipleship playing a role in that doubt going away in your life. And I, I think it is, it is correlated because when we understand what it means to truly become a Christ follower, it is obviously to turn and follow Jesus, but to get on mission with him and make disciples. And yes, part of disciple making is the gospel and evangelism, but that's not the complete focus. That's just the starting point. We're getting people to the starting point, and then we are making disciples, teaching them to obey everything he's commanded. And so we put so much focus on we've got to get them saved. Well, God does that. We present it. Yes, we want people to be saved, and we have a burden for it, but God does that. We make disciples. Yeah, um, when you were talking about that that's that's such a huge a huge point um because a lot of times in that evangelism we don't you think about like even a camp set like we don't always try to make those things clear like i think what a lot of 
people in that emotional time is responding to. I mean, the, I think God might be doing something mm -hmm. and, um, but not helping people kind of work through, okay, well, what, what does that mean? Like, do you, you know, okay, have you, ha have you taken these steps in faith already? Yeah. Okay. Well then maybe it's not because you're never saved. Maybe there's something God's wanting to do something different. Um, but it made me, I, have, I had to chuckle because it reminds me of one year at camp when uh, before, it was right before camp, uh, we had been planning for Hillmont for the camp that we did. And you guys are maybe new, um, the church where the three of us worked together in youth ministry. Uh, we put on a camp every year for the middle schoolers and uh, we used high schoolers to staff it. An amazingly terrible idea. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was, it, had, it was good and bad. Had it had its ups and downs. But um, uh so we did everything. I mean, we planned the services, we brought in the band, we did the games, I mean, the whole thing. And um, I'll never forget one of our high school staffers, I uh, won't name any names, um, but came up to us, right, I guess it was the beginning of camp or during staff training or something. I was like, hey, what, what night are we doing the emotional worship? Like, those were the words that were used. Do you remember David. that? Yeah, David. Yeah, no, I do, I do remember <laughs> that. And you, know, you remember who it was? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it just threw me. I was like, we don't plan that, but that's what was thought. Like, yeah. apparently you always have to have that, uh, that emotional night. And, um, it was just an assumption. Hey, we build a service at camp specifically to get kids crying, you know, and, and some throwing up on Scott Patterson's feet, you know, there's different things there, but, um, yeah. So if, if, if you find yourself, maybe now or or maybe it comes in the future that you begin to doubt your faith um, whether it's real saving uh, or not we're going to talk about in uh, the second part of our discussion how do we move from doubt to assurance um, how do we take take um, that, that path to where we, we know when maybe we begin to struggle with sin and, or maybe, I think one of the reasons people might do it is this maybe bad things start happening to them, you know, start going through some hard things. Like, well, if, if I was really God's child, certainly he wouldn't. And um, so we're going to talk about moving from doubt to, uh, uh, to assurance in that, that next section. So uh, we're going to uh, hit the pause button here for a second. We're going to pause for the calls and, um, Go uh, make use of some dude wipes, and we'll be back in just a moment. Hey, what's up, Dude Facts listeners? Hope you're enjoying this week's podcast and the discussion we got going for you over there. Just want to let you know, if you didn't already, we have a new website that you can reach us at at www.dudefactspodcast.com. Go check us out over there. We've got little blurbs about us, links to all our socials, and ways that you can listen and watch the podcast. Uh, check us out. Share us with any of your friends and family, anybody you might think might like the show. We'd love to see you over there and have anybody new check us out. It's a great place that they can find out about us and what we do. And I continue to enjoy this week's episode of the Dude Facts Podcast. We'll see you back over there. All right, all right, all right. As Matthew McConaughey would say, we're back. And uh, hey, it is time for March Madness. Ooh, oh, yeah. yeah. Are you guys pumped about this? Except that Austin P is not in it. I know. <laughs> That's how I feel. Let's go, Let's go not P. P. You think they'll get like a, the NIT or the CVI or the... Yeah, there's like, STD, there's like 18 of their uh, brackets now. But, uh, you know, if, if anything, if you're disappointed that your team's not in it or your bracket bust on like day one, you have the annual Dude Facts bracket to look forward to. So we're going to reveal yeah. that now. Last year we did um, Heroes. And, uh, you know, we, we, we did this whole thing about heroes, different heroes from different genres fighting each other. And then this epic battle. This year, we're, we're doing something very similar. We're doing fast food french fries. Mm, which so. is a hero in my book. Yes. Right. That's a good decision. <laughs> so, so this was kind of hard. What, what I did is I, I talked to our other 
um, Dude Facts panelist here, Josh and Ryan and Grant, and um, just kind of ask them their thoughts on some fast food french fries. We know we're going to leave some places out. We, we just couldn't do a tournament, like a too big of a tournament. But we tried to get most of the classics and uh, places that you're familiar with. We also realize, except for Grant, we're all in the South. And so most of these places are here, okay? Um, but, uh, I think there's one or two that, that may be um, in other parts of the United States. So yes, we realize we're in the Southern United States. Yes, we realize that we're gonna leave some places out. And there may be some places that you think are fast food that maybe technically aren't fast food. So just have fun with it, okay? Don't get mad because your French fry is not on this list. I, that's just what I wanna preface this with. Mm -hmm. So we have 16 French fries and uh, we have four different um, brackets. So obviously they'll all play, there'll be a champion out of each bracket for our final four and then we'll have a, uh, a final four championship and champion our dude facts listeners are going to help vote but i'm going to reveal who is on each bracket are you guys excited about this let's do it and just to make a comment based off you telling other people we don't may not have your fries like we can't help it if your fries suck right that's true so if they're not on the that's list sorry true. it's not our yeah. there are some on this list that do suck that's right yeah and and, <laughs> and, and, and here's the thing too some of these fries I don't like that I'm gonna read off, but I recognize that they are popular. And so they may have received a seating based on what we deem as popular, but may not be the best. I mean, just like the real um, you know, March Madness tournament, there's a lot of teams I don't like. That's oh, true. Yeah. They're still in it. Yeah, that's so, right. You, know? you have to have those villains that you hate. <laughs> so if you don't want them on here, vote them out, all right? So it's all on you. That's what we do in churches. So. Yes, that's right. We do it here. That's what we try to do in our country, but that doesn't always work. <laughs> all right. So uh, the uh, the first bracket is the classic bracket. So these are the classic ones that you just automatically think mm. of when you think of fast food French fries. So the one seed, of course, because everybody talks about these fries as if they're God's gift to fry them. McDonald's is your one seed. The two seed in the bracket is Wendy's. The three seed, this one's a little bit more outside of our uh, part of the country, is in and out And the four seed, Whataburger. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your classic bracket. Across from them is going to be the crunchy slash um, crinkle bracket so it's either a crunchy type fry or a crinkle type fry there weren't enough of both so i had to combine them mm, okay so the one seed is burger king the two seed is culver's the three seed is shake shack wait what shake shack shake shack shake shack and the four seed I've never heard of that jack in the box we always called that jack in the crack <laughs> Oh, you never heard of Shake That's Shack? That's the after. No, Shake Shack. Oh, yeah, they have one in Nashville. Yeah. So it's like a New York-based uh, chain, I think. I got you. Yeah. yeah. It's tasty. All right, then we have the niche bracket. These are the mm. ones who are kind of unique compared to the rest of the other fries. So the one seed in the niche are the Chick-fil-A fries, the waffle fries. Mm, yeah. yeah. The number two, Arby's, because they have those curly fries. Oh. The three seed, five guys, just because they're interesting and delicious and you order like a small and they give you enough to feed an army. And then the uh, four seed, Popeyes. I should have used a fart sound for that one. <laughs> I was gonna say, that, man, that, that, that conference is looking really strong. It is. Yeah, Stacks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, and we're gonna have to have these fries here uh -huh. to taste oh, them, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I think. I mean, if, we, if we're gonna do this scientifically, I yeah. did grab uh, some McDonald's fries on the way home from Nashville the other day, and they were fresh. And it was pretty good. There is something <laughs> special about the McDonald's. They are kind of like the New York Yankees of this <laughs> tournament. <laughs> That's right. I think I still have some in our van from like 15 years ago. <laughs> girls dropped them. That's because, I mean, that you, you guys have seen the uh, <laughs> Super Size Me, that old documentary. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the guy puts fries in a jar and just leaves them there for like months on his desk. 
and he puts all kinds of McDonald's food in there, like a filet o fish sandwich, <laughs> um, the Big Mac, all that. And all the burgers turn disgusting after a few weeks. You see the mold. The French fries, exactly the same. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just pop them in the air fryer. Yeah, get the styrofoam <laughs> packing peanuts. So it makes you wonder what is in those fries. So the, the fourth and final bracket, this bracket is called, We Have Good Fries? It's a question mark at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, these are just places that I couldn't find anywhere else to stick. So The, the one seed is KFC. The two seed, Sonic. The three seed is Hardee's slash Carl's Jr. because depending on where you are in the country. And the four seed, Dairy Queen. So yeah, nobody's well, going to advance. Well, I mean, somebody will advance. One of those will be in the final four. That's, that's your Cinderella, right? Yep. So we have a Cinderella. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so those are the 16 places. Uh, so who are your favorites? If you guys had to pick right now. There's some... Uh... Let's see, uh, Five Guys is in there. That's going to be a contender. Mm -hmm. um, Chick fil A, always. So I do love me some Chick fil A fries. Yeah, Five Guys, the Cajun are. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. The, the only problem is you have to like take out a loan yes. to buy it. But uh, I, you had Arby's on there, right? Yep. I, I'm a big fan of the um, Arby little. Those Pro, curly fry, fries. spiral fry, yeah, those, especially dipping them in Arby's sauce. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. delicious. Yeah, and Chick Fil A fries and Chick Fil A sauce is, is pretty good. Too. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm getting hungry. Yeah, I know. All of a sudden, let's we, just we need cut to this short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um. Now is that the sloth or Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> so so <laughs> I. I'm finding some people have this uh, same thought that I do, but but I really like Burger King's fries. I, I don't know what it is about them. I think it's just the the crunchy texture, and I prefer those over McDonald's. Or Wendy's. If I get them fresh, they're actually they are pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, my only problem with Burger King fries is that even if you get a large, there's just not enough of them. That's true. They're, I don't think there's ever enough fries. Their sizes are pretty messed up. It's not like you know, going to McDonald's, you guys. get a large and they give you like. A trough full with the onion ring. Yeah. <laughs> my only problem with Burger King are the stupid commercials. I can't get that <laughs> jingle out of my head. Oh, no. It's like I could be having the worst day ever in traffic and, and BK Happy Your Way just comes into my head. <laughs> like I don't want to hear this right now. So we're we uh whenever we get ads, you know, we've been watching a lot of YouTube TV recently and we have to mute the TV when that comes on. <laughs> Like we don't mute anything else out, but Burger King ads, it, the, you're the, out. There was a funny uh, video, viral video, that was going around last football season. It was when the Giants were in the playoffs, and uh, some Giants fan had just watched his team lose and get knocked out of the playoffs, and he's depressed. His hands are in his head, and he's he's all but crying, and his buddy's filming him, and then the BK have it your way. <laughs> it's like, and he turns it up really loud. Uh, yeah, just sitting there sulking. That'll do it. <laughs> Jingle is playing. It's it's pretty awesome. You guys have any sleeper picks? Anybody that's going to make it out that you're going to be surprised, um, but but maybe not surprised because they're they're sneaky good. Run through like the three and four seeds. So in the we have good fries. You got Hardee's and Carl's Jr. Dairy Queen, Five Guys and Popeyes in the niche. Uh, Shake Shack and Jack in the Box in the Crunchy Bracket, and In and Out and Whataburger in the Classic. Well, the the um, Five Guys and whoever else was there with them, like I, I don't think they count as a low seed. Um, yeah, it's a stacked bracket. Yeah, it is. Hardy's Hardy's has some good fries. They're if they're because they're crisp. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like a good crispy fry. Mm -hmm. So for the same reason, I think that um, both Shake Shack and Culver's could be a couple of dark horses. Oh yeah, there. But that, those good. crinkle fries are pretty mm -hmm. good. Yeah, and Culver's every time I go there, their fries are hot and fresh. They do the crispy. crinkle at Culver's. Yeah. yeah, I don't eat there often. Crinkle at Crow. Their their only downfall <laughs> is that they're, they're a little under seasoned. But if you yeah. put a little salt and pepper on them, they're mm. good. Yeah, I noticed there wasn't like a uh, steak and shake on there. So uh, I thought about it, but I didn't know if that was fast food technically. Uh, okay. 
Yeah, like, you have to sit down and order that. Yeah, I don't know if that counts. And I don't know if those are French fries, technically. Yeah, they're like shoestring. It, yeah. It's the I same as Freddy's. Food. It's like spaghetti French fries. Yeah. Yeah, Freddy's the same way. Mm -hmm. But you put some of that Freddy's seasoning. Oh, yeah. It's really good. And then use some of their uh, ketchup. The, yeah, the Freddy's uh, sauce the Freddy's or sauce. whatever that yeah. is. Mm -hmm. So, it, so you listeners get to vote on this. We're just gonna try to um, encourage your vote by telling you what we like. Oh, yeah. But you still get the final say. So, if you're listening to this on Monday, the 18th, uh, that that's when we're gonna rebuild the bracket. So we'll start putting them up. We'll have the first round go next week, and then we'll do the final eight, final four, and championship. And I think when we get to the final four, we need to have representatives from each four yeah, we'll taste them uh, yeah, here yeah, and, and we'll eat them together and if Give it's a place nice french fry asmr oh yeah <laughs> and if it's a place we don't have grant maybe he'll, can he'll can buy one. some and have it mm -hmm. and he can tell us oh yeah if awesome. in and out's in there i think grant needs to be the representative for in and out yeah so i so i did go get some in and out when i was in la last week and uh, i was reacquainted with how good mm -hmm. in and out's burgers are delicious <laughs> are they in and out pretty quick they are yep i was in and then i was back in the hotel and it was coming out <laughs> <laughs> the grease just yeah. to slide right through yeah, just <laughs> lubrication man so speaking of granny's not here but his pickle is in our hearts Ooh. always yes that dang pickle would um you guys listeners came up with some great names and i think we we did too um but uh, i wanted to read some of the names because this is another thing that we want you to vote on. So you're going to vote on fries. You're going to vote on pickle names. Just all kinds of things we're going to have you do. We're giving you assignments, mm -hmm. dude, facts, listeners. So here are some of the names for Grant's pickle. And here's, here's what I'll do to make it kind of fun. And you guys might have seen some of the comments. So it's fine if you know who this is. But I'm going to share the name. And then you guys can guess what listener. Because mm -hmm. I think... I think we know most of these listeners. All right, list out the listeners that gave names. Okay. Can you do that? Sure. Um, your daughter. Okay. Olivia. Um, the, just a guy named Asian Kid, which I think is... <laughs> is it one of... I, 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 Bailey's I, boyfriend. Okay, oh, Bailey's yeah. boyfriend. <laughs> Tyler. Okay. Um, of course, David gave one last week on the show. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I put mine in here, too. Uh, Ethan gave a name, and then Johnny Smith oh, uh, Johnny. gave a submission. So now, did you get the submission from the guy from the Netherlands? The uh, yes, I, I I did. Okay. I <laughs> don't know if we can read that one on the <laughs> podcast, but uh, if you really want to know, DM us. We'll let you yeah. know. So here, here are the names. Uh, the first one is Dylan. Dylan. Just, just like that. Single name Dylan the pickle. Dylan. Dill. Oh, oh, oh yeah. there is so, a good little. So, yeah. There is a that one. that deserved a. I also love just like the single name, kind of like share. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the so pickle's did they, famous enough. Did they oh, spell yeah. it D I L L A N? No, D I L L O N. O O N. That sounds like an Olivia pun. I don't think she might. So, wait, it was Olivia, Asian kid. <laughs> His name's Ryan. Um, Tyler. Jo Tyler. Johnny Smith. Johnny Smith. So those are the four new ones. Um, Outside Ethan. Of, oh, and Ethan. Well. Oh, that could have been Ethan. So. I know the answer to it, so I don't want to. It is Johnny Smith. Oh, it's Johnny. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's a good one, Johnny. Yeah. So our next name is Barry. Barry the Pickle. <laughs> <laughs> Barry. Oh, I'm hoping it's not Olivia or Ethan. Um, well, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it is Ethan. <laughs> How did he spell it? B A R R Y. So, like Barry White. We're going to have a talk, Ethan. <laughs> Okay, I'll just go ahead and read mine and Dave's. Um, I said Purvis, Dave said Dickie. Mm -hmm. So we had those two submissions. Um, we did have the guy from the Netherlands. I did write that on here. Uh, again, Yurkin. Okay. Um, Keep the show family friendly. Yeah. Hey, Yurkin. <laughs> Here's another name. 
Dill Licious. Dill Licious. Hmm. Well, I guess that's Asian kid. It is not. Oh, is that Olivia? Tyler. I'm just gonna guess them all. Tell it you that it right. is Tyler. <laughs> I was like, I think that was Tyler. All right, and the last two were were just really, um, you know, they they really thought out long names for this pickle. The first one is Demetrius Bartholomew, and the second one is Peter Donquavius. <laughs> I actually think those names have a history. I think there's a story behind both. Oh yeah, names. yeah. I've heard it. Those names referenced before. Okay. <laughs> So I'm glad we didn't start with those because you would have known. Yeah, that was your your daughter's career. So you, your right. daughter said Peter Donquavius, and Asian kid said Demetrius Bartholomew. Okay, his name is Ryan. Ryan. Oh, that's Ryan. Yeah, we, yeah, we've yeah. met Ryan. Yeah. Okay, so Ryan said Demetrius Bartholomew. So Dylan, Barry, Purvis, Dicky, Delicious, Demetrius Bartholomew, Peter Donquavius, and Yurkin. Yurkin. Those are our names. <laughs> so we're going to put those up on social media and uh, the pickle will have one of those names. Yeah. You guys have any favorites coming out of the gate? I don't know. Um, Barry. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't hate Peter Donquavius. So yeah, I, I kind of like Peter yeah, Donquavius like Don too. That, that was pretty good. I mean, it, there's no. I thought there like, might be a play on words too with Peter. That might just be something. <laughs> Man, what's going on? <laughs> All right, so we asked you to do one more thing, and you already did it. So don't worry, we're not giving you more homework, dude. Facts, listeners, but we asked you to list five facts about yourself, and make four of them true facts and one of them false. And uh, we, we put this out on our last podcast and on social. And a total of two of you did this. Thank you. You two. Losers. Um, no, not you two. The other people that didn't. So, oh, yeah, the band so you two. Ac actually, no. I, oh. I, I forgot to, uh, to go back and uh, type these out. So I'm going to have to pull this up here. But uh, one of them was Tyler, and the other was so Ryan. I've, I've got them kid. here. Oh, right, Ryan. This read. Ryan's got them. How, how about you read those for us, Ryan? Get to my photos. But while Ryan's looking at those, I thought to play along, the three of us can read five facts about ourselves tonight and have one of them uh, be untrue, and we can all guess. Yeah, I've got to – I'm trying to – find where I put those because I can't remember. All right. Let's start with uh, start with other Ryan. Asian kid. Asian kid. All right, Asian kid. And that's not racist. Like, he yeah. calls himself that. Demetrius Bartholomew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Also, uh, is, is his name, is it spelled wrong? Asian, it's I-A-N, right? Not A-I-N. I don't know. He's pretty smart, so. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he wrote is, I would just assume that was correct, hmm. even though it might not be. <laughs> maybe it's a sane kid. Ah, no, mm. it's a play on that. A yeah. sane maybe kid. I'm visually oh. racist by just assuming. Yeah, yeah maybe we are racist. <laughs> uh, all right. So his uh, here's his five. So uh, favorite color is purple. Uh, my left ear is not the same as my right. Not the same. Yeah. I assume like shape different or maybe like different height. Um, mm. I slept for two days straight once. That'd be nice. I haven't done that in yeah. decades. Um, I was expected to be a girl when I was born, which same. I had that. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I was supposed to be Elizabeth. Um, and then lastly, I've, I've stung on the back of the head. I think it means I've been stung on the back of the head. Oh, wait, who, who's this? This is Ryan. Ryan. Okay. So the bad thing is we don't know the the right answer. So Ryan has to listen to this and tell us the. So we have to we have to make our best guess. Of like so we have to story. make our best guess, and then he'll tell us eventually, hopefully. Got any idea? All right, run through those again. Okay, favorite color is purple. Left ear is not the same as right ear. Uh, slept for two days straight once. I was expected to be a girl when I was born. And lastly, stung on the back of the head. 
I'm going to go with the last one just because he made a mistake. And I think he was just going to type up something <laughs> fictional there at the end. Yeah, I, because I think I've heard some of the, I, I'm pretty certain Purple was right. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with that one too, the bee sting. I'm going to go with having no visual basis for this. Uh, <laughs> the left ear not being the same as the right. Hmm. Okay. So if the left ear is different than the right, I think he needs to send us a picture. Yeah, we, we oh, yeah. need photographic we evidence of that. Any proof. All right, so Ryan, tell us, other Ryan, tell us what <laughs> is the false fact. All right. All right. And then uh, our only other um, submitter, Tyler. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Tyler, five facts about myself with one being false. It's very mm. professional when you wrote this out. I appreciate yeah. that. that. Um, number one, David Cates and I once danced on stage together in Puerto Rico. Oh, we already know that's true. true. <laughs> <laughs> number two, I storm chase and would love to chase tornadoes in Oklahoma. I know that's true. That's true. Um, <laughs> I think you talked about that on the podcast a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Number three, I have two sisters and one brother. Number four. I know he has sisters. Yeah, that's what I'm not sure on the, the brother. Yeah, I don't. I know. I should be more sister. sure on that. I should be a better friend. I talk to him every day. Um, uh, number four, I've been to Yellowstone National Park, and it's one of my favorite U.S. national parks. That's true. And number five, I lived in. Seba, Puerto Rico for two years, which I know that's true. Dengue. So it's got to be the brother one. Zingo. I, I, I'm thinking the brother as well. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, unless he's hid, hidden that brother from me for a long time. Unless he lived in a different city in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Or didn't live there for two years. Uh, and lived oh, that's a year and a half. That's true. He could be playing a little yeah, he, he could really be <laughs> pulling us. But yeah, let's go with the siblings on, on Tyler. All right. I think, I think we're all in agreement on that one. So, Tyler, let us know. Are That's we right? right? Uh, okay. So now we're going to play with uh, our, our, you know, our uh, facts about ourselves and uh, have our listeners um, guess. But but we're going to reveal it here um, as well. So, anybody want to go first? Well, what do y'all go? Since I've been reading other ones out. If you're ready. Josh is ready. Yeah, I'm pulling it up. Here he goes. I had a twin die in utero. Mm. I've never had any broken bones. I have ridden my bike one and a half times across the state of Tennessee. I have had brain surgery, and I only got four down, but one is a lie. Oh, so, so, so one of the four. So, so, one one of the so four. we have like a, a better. I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember. I I had four, five four, things five. earlier, and I can't find it, so I was just writing them down. There was another one in there, but one of those is one of those. Are. So I know you've had brain surgery, and I know you've ridden your bike. A lot, and I, I remember you trying to ride it across the state of Tennessee, but I don't know if one and a half times is correct. Mm -hmm. But I would assume yes. Trip you up. Um, the twin in utero. I've never heard you talk about that. That's that's my inclination as the twin in utero. Hmm. Also, wish we had the Dwight sound clip. He ate his. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that one. Let's go with the twin in utero. No, I've never had any broken bones. Man, that oh, was wow. my I other man. Man. I absorbed my twin. Did you really? So now you have the strength, have the strength of a man. And a baby. And a baby. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. So you are Dwight. Yeah, I am. Man. Mm -hmm. I like, he is my favorite character on The Office. Yeah. There's a good reason for that. Mm-hmm. We so, just, I soul just, brothers. I just feel a connection with him. <laughs> so, what was the twin, a girl or a boy? Uh, I don't, I don't know. You, you absorbed it before. Yeah, you know? I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't. 
Do you ever feel any like twin strength? Uh, yeah, there's there's times when I just feel like uh, I have this baby wanting to come out, <laughs> and then I cry a lot, and I yeah. put my pants. And then you go get the dude wipes. <laughs> <laughs> Another advertisement for dude, dude wipes. wipes. Yeah, we need to reach out to them. I'm wanting to, I'm going to send them an email. <laughs> so uh, go follow dude wipe stuff. It's pretty funny, and then make sure you talk about us when you tag them. Yep. yep. We're we're gonna break this clip out and put it yeah. on social. There we go. Do you think, are there are there like DMs open? Can so I just can like send them pictures of slide like into my bowel movements? <laughs> you know, that would probably match their <laughs> their social media campaigns. So. Well, that's pretty awesome. That's a neat fact yeah. that I didn't know about. That, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. Okay. I actually I actually forget about it pretty often and um or, you know, my mom will say something to me. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because we just, we never talk about it. What wasn't like, yeah. I think it was pretty early on. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah. So you it, don't hear it, it talking be... to you or anything? Those voices Sometimes, in your head. yeah. Sometimes. You feel like but, a phantom crying. But then it was a baby, <laughs> never, never learned English. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Who's next? I'll, uh, I'll read mine here. Um, if I can read my writing. <laughs> So I've, I've been to 25 different countries to include Qatar and Taiwan. I am related to President Abraham Lincoln. My favorite dessert, German chocolate cake. My personal YouTube channel has over 216,000 views. And I've been stuck on the amethyst level on Duolingo for six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i don't know the countries i don't i know you've been to a lot thanks to the military i'm, I'm pretty sure i know for a fact you've been to both of those specific ones you listed but you said 25 total yep countries not counties right <laughs> <laughs> countries all right and then what was your next one um related to abe lincoln yeah i know that one. i think that's true yeah What's the third one? My favorite dessert, German chocolate. I don't know that. I don't know. I want to say we've talked about that before. I think that's true. All right. What's the fourth one? My YouTube channel, 216,000 views. Ooh. Well, now I know you have a lot, but I don't know the full number on that. And then the last one again? The last one is I've been stuck on the amethyst level on Duolingo for six weeks. <laughs> what, what language? Spanish. Why are you trying to learn Spanish? Uh, I I think because that's the second language in our country. So. Well, Cinco de Mayo is coming up too. Yeah. So. <laughs> just so I can order at Taco the, Tuesdays, man. So I can order at the restaurants. Uh, but uh, yeah, obviously I'm no bueno. I, I I'm gonna go with the 25 countries. I'm gonna go with the YouTube follow or views. Yeah. Okay. The correct answer is the dessert, oh. or the incorrect statement. Oh, that really? Dessert. That is not my favorite dessert. I could have swore we'd like to discuss that. I was that taking before. your word for it, man. <laughs> I, I'm, I do. It it would German have been chocolate a long time cake ago, is but. good, but um, no peanut butter pie or oh, yeah. like a fruit apple pie is my favorite. So mm. peanut butter pie. I, I had to get on YouTube to see how many views I had so I got on that today so, well, yeah. well congratulations cool. on that yeah I, I don't know if that's great because I've had it for like 20 years but. <laughs> so is I mean, that your it, running one or just the well the, the J it has um it has some running things okay. on it I have a I have a YouTube uh, video on my YouTube channel that is a a project that I did in college that every once in a while I'll get comments on and people are like trying to critique on me and I'm just like, do you see how many years ago this was posted? <laughs> it's like, I'm not looking for feedback. <laughs> yeah, I, I put a video of Karis crying at me singing when she was an infant. And that video still gets views. And it's mm. like 15 years old or 16 that years old. Is so. a good video. So <laughs> Everybody go watch it. Let's get his numbers up. Oh, try. yeah. Got to get over a uh, quarter mil. Yeah. You and you and Kev. <laughs> and I have Rock dang it been stuck on the Amethyst League. I can't get out. <laughs> So I'm I'm in the promotion zone right now. So I'm hoping this is the I week. Need, I need to use Duolingo. So 
I'll uh, keep you guys posted. I'm going to France this year. I'm going to get prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Ryan, what are yours? All right. All right. So I've got, I do, I also have a dessert related one in here. It was not planned. Okay. Um, so first I've got, I am highly allergic to poison ivy to the point my eyes were one time swollen shut and I still had to drive myself to the doctor. Um, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> Uh, the second is I am pretty badly colorblind, and I did not find out until I was well into adulthood. You just thought everything was black and white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, why people talk about Color. those colors? Everything just looks the same. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I once got dragged by a horse. Uh, I competed in track and field in high school. And then my favorite cake is red velvet. Oh, you also the fr- favorite uh, dessert. Mm-hmm. Too. I know the track and field is correct. See, everything in me wanted to say that's not right. <laughs> yeah, I'd... but you've been there. I mean, I love you, Ryan, but I just don't see it. I don't see it. it always trips people up. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like the field and field. Oh, the field part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a pole vaulter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's fun. Okay, so red velvet. We know track and field is true. There's a lot of detail for the uh, um, poison ivy one. Mm-hmm. Mm. Do you remember ever hearing that story? I don't remember that. Had to drive yourself mm-hmm. to the hospital. Like you were squinty. Yeah. Okay. And then what was the second one you said? Uh, I'm pretty badly colorblind. Didn't find out until I was an adult. And then what's the third one? I think it came. Uh, I was once drugged by a horse. Well, you 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 did grow up in Texas, <laughs> so that seems very yeah. plausible. Yeah, I could see that. That one. I'm. Have you ever seen him eat red velvet cake? No. It looks like the kind of guy that would like red velvet. Cake. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds good. Yeah, it does. It's delicious. It would be funny if both of our wrong answers had to do with desserts. I think that's the one I'm going with. Yeah, sometimes Ryan and I are on the same wavelength, so I'm, yeah, I'm going to go with that one too. <laughs> you guys are right. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> My actual favorite desserts, actually, it's it, it flips at times, but it's either German chocolate cake or oh, wow. carrot cake. Oh, man, what a coincidence. I should have thrown a dessert one in there. <laughs> Well, thank you guys, listeners, for uh, joining us uh, for this section and guessing along with us. If you do want to play along and want to list five facts, one untrue, you could still do it, and uh, we may read it on the podcast. But, uh, yeah, get ready. Get online. Vote for all the things that you're going to get to vote for, pickles and french fries. It's going to be awesome. That's right. More great discussion coming up right after this. Hey Dude Facts, as always, we want to continue the conversation. So that's why we ask that you get on our social media pages, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all of that, and comment and join in the discussion. We are so thankful for many of you that got on and wished us a happy birthday. We hope you enjoyed that birthday episode and we hope you're enjoying this episode. Hey, sometimes if you write comments, we even share them on the podcast. We love to engage with people, and that's a big reason why we do this. We love to just tell the story of Jesus, to have some laughs, and to meet some cool people along the way. So if you're not engaged in our social media, you really need to be because there is so much that you're missing out on. So get on now, and hey, this is only part of the Dude Facts conversation. The rest of it, you got to get on our social medias and continue it. So we'll see you there. And we're back. I don't know about you, but that was a much needed break for us. Um, so part three here, we're going to wrap up our conversation on um, uh, doubting our faith, um, doubting our salvation. Um, and 
Um, we, we talked in the first part about what might lead to that uh, in our lives, things that can happen. We even shared our own stories with that. And so what we want to do here um, at the end is, as we wrap up uh, the, the podcast this week is talk about uh, if we are struggling with that or we do in the future, um, how do we move from a place of doubt to a place of, of assurance to just, you know, we, we know that we know. And uh, no matter what comes our way, we're, we're going to be uh, steady in that knowledge um, that, that we're God's children um, and, and put, put the doubt and all behind us. Um, as, as we've talked, uh, and, and we've each kind of shared our story on this, um, what, are, what are some things that, that for you, maybe we re revisit this some, um, that really helped you move from that place of doubt into assurance. I think we each mentioned a little bit of that, but uh, maybe let, let, let's revisit that a little bit. And um, then how can we encourage others uh, and our listeners that might be dealing with it to, to be able to put those things into place as well? I, I, I share a little bit um, during the first part and I'll revisit that, but then wrap it into a bigger picture is it, it's about remembering where we get salvation, and that is by the grace of God through the redemptive work of Christ on the cross. So that's where salvation comes from. So again, it's God's um, gift. It's Jesus's performance. It's not our performance. Well, how do we remember that and remember our identity? Well, it's it comes from us being connected with our creator. And it sounds like a Sunday school answer, but the more that we know God and the more we spend time with him, the more that we understand who he is, his love for us and his redemption plan for mankind. At the same time, the more that we know God, we also know our enemy. And I think that's the key to this as, as well as recognizing that our enemy wants us to doubt. I mean, that, that's a very obvious tactic of our enemy to get us to doubt, because the more that we doubt, we're, we're out of the ballgame. I mean, we, we are basically rendered catatonic, if you will, as Christians on mission for Christ, is uh, we, are, we are now doubting and, and struggling to move forward. So it comes with intimate knowledge of God. The more time we spend uh, with God, the less we're going to doubt because we know who he is. We know his love. We know his mercy. We know his story um, from Genesis to Revelation. And we understand, hey, I have trusted. I have followed. I am in that redemption plan for mankind. And it's not what I did. It's what Jesus did. And, and we walk with less doubt. Yeah, I was going to, um, I was thinking, I've heard this a few times, and I, I think I've even shared it here, that I had a pastor once that uh, he would use the phrase pretty often that um, when God, when God's looking at us, like his, his concern is not our perfection, but our direction. And uh, a lot of times we might put that um, an unfair expectation on ourselves that even God doesn't have for us. Um, and, uh, and that, that, that expectation is, well, I either am sinning too much or in too bad of a way, but where do we draw that line? Like, how do we know, well, this amount of sin is okay for the believer. And, uh, but when you cross it, this line, then it becomes, oh, well, you're, you're probably not, not a Christian. And you know, a, a habitual practice, you know, there's something to be said there. Um, you know, there may be something to look into there with, with your salvation, but, um, Overall, we, I think a great question to ask is, you know, what, where do I really want to head though? Like in, in the depth of my heart, what, what is it that's in me that, that, um, in, informs the direction I really want to go? Like, do I want to, to honor God? Do I really want to follow him? Do I really want to be obedient to Jesus? Um, is that really like the, the, the big main concern in my life and in my decision-making, whether I, do it right or not, or consistently or not. I think that's a good question to ask is what, what really is the burden of your heart? And if, if the burden is, man, I, I want to be obedient. I, I do want to love him with my life and with my actions. And I haven't done it perfectly. I haven't done it perfectly today, but I want to move in that direction. Um, that can be something that can be really encouraging. I, I think if, 
if your answer to the question is, I just feel like I should, you know, but it's not really something that is a true desire, just, well, that's what I'm supposed to be. It's what I'm supposed to do. It's what, um, what can, what can I get away with? How little can I, if it's questions like that, I think you definitely have reason to doubt, but if you can, you know, sit back, take stock, evaluate, and just with honesty and sincerity say, man, I really want God to be honored with my life. Um, I want to follow Jesus the, the best I can. I think that can bring a lot of assurance as well, because that heart doesn't come outside of a work of the Holy Spirit in us. Um, a desire to follow God, like truly follow him, not just know about him or be religious, but to live your life each day and even moment by moment, like, okay, what, what, what does Jesus want in this moment? What does he want in this moment? Like that doesn't come from a human heart. So if that's there, God's done some sort of work. Uh, and then, then the other thing that I was thinking as well is, ha have you seen him at work in the past? Um, it, it, you've, you, you know there's something that, that has come from you that is a work, is his work in you. Um, and, and think back to those things. Um, okay, yeah, I, I've seen him at work. I've seen things happen um, that are clearly from him, ways he's used me. And, um, and so maybe you're in a slump. Um, in this moment, but if you've seen that evidence in the past, like th don't ignore that either. I think those are some things that you can kind of look back to to maybe help build some assurance. Yeah. No, I talked about in the first part, you know, the kind of a big catalyst for me was discipleship and having those people come in and kind of give me that direction that I was looking for, especially early on in my, my walk of faith. And then beyond that was just the continuing as I got older, making sure you know, testing my faith and making sure that it's my faith alone and not, I'm not going off of somebody else's, you know, what, what I've been told or what I've, you know, making sure that it's actually, you know, I'm feeling led to my faith and not, I'm not just going off of what I think is expected of me or what I think is, you know, the natural step for me in life, but, you know, making sure that, that I own that faith and that I'm not just uh, going through motions. Yeah, I was um, thinking, uh, just came to my head, and I can't believe I didn't think about it earlier, but um, in John, First John, we get um, some instruction on um, kind of the, this specific thing. Um, I'm, I'm pulling this up real quick, sorry. Uh, yeah, First John 5, 13. Um, it says, I, I write these things to you who believe in the name of God's Son so that you can know that you have eternal life. And, um, and he talks about confidence. So we have confidence that we have our relationship with God. If we ask for anything in agreement with his will, he, he listens to us. So my prayer there. But throughout the book of John, uh, 1 John, there's these different tests, if you will, that he kind of uh, puts out before his, his readers and... Um, it's basically this thing like to, to determine if like, if, if your faith, you know, if it's real, if it's legit. And, um, and I know some of the things in there are like, if, if you say you are without sin, um, then you're, you're lying. So it, one of those things like, well, I've, I've got it all figured out like that would be something, but there's, there's an honesty, I think about who we are that also comes from, a work of the spirit in us when we're able to say, yeah, I I've done, I've done some things that, that don't honor God. Like when you feel that conviction and you realize these things are sin, that, that as well is some assurance. And I think when you were talking about where Satan wants to get us to doubt that, that might be that point that he is able to kind of get his foot in the door and like, ah, see, you shouldn't have done that. Like a real Christian would have done that. A real person mm -hmm. trying to follow Jesus would have done that. But someone who's following Jesus has recognition of sin and has guilt over sin because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so in those moments, it's just knowing what's true and what's a lie, um, that, that for the follower of Jesus, yeah, that's going to be, we're going to be made clear. Like that sin is going to be made clear that there's going to be that guilt, but then your enemy wants to move it from guilt to shame and shame's the lie. Like, Oh, you're just that person. That's just who you are. You're never going to be any better. Uh, but listening to the truth of, well, I know I, I have followed Jesus. And so maybe this guilt, you know, God's trying to get my attention 
and I'm going to be honest about this before the Lord. I'm going to confess it, which is confession. I mean, that word just simply means to agree with. So I'm agreeing with God that this is against him. Um, and there's other things in that in, in the book of 1 John. That'd be maybe a good read. It's not a long book. Um, you know, if you're struggling with that, go through some of those things that are in there. He even talks about what loving your brother uh, is another test and um, a, a genuine concern for for other people, especially other believers. There's a unique relationship that we, as believers, we have with other believers that we don't have with people who aren't within the church, the, the church of God. Um, and that can be something else. If you're trying to find this assurance, I do, do you, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to communicate this well, so you guys jump in, but it, it's, there's this, there is this closeness and this sincerity um, in relationships. Like I just think about the three of us here in this room, like there's a depth of care and understanding and compassion that we automatically have for each yeah. other, not because we've just known each other for a long time, but because we share a common faith. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I meet new people at church because my job is connecting with new people at the church. I mean, I meet new people every Sunday and I can tell pretty quick in our conversation where they are in their relationship with the Lord. And man, there's just a connection there, yeah. you know, that comes pretty quick. So if you've experienced that, or if you know people in, that are in your life that are believers, and you're like, yeah, there's something new, there's some, or something unique, something different, something deep here. That that again is a work of the Holy Spirit. Um, and and if if not, if like these people are weird, I don't like being around them. You know, if there's some <laughs> sort of catch, there may be something there to, to look into as well. Um, but there are some things to look at. Um, specifically, how do you respond to when you sin? How do you how do you feel about treat love other believers that can really, I think, bring a lot of assurance to you? Yeah, Jesus said himself, you know, my disciples by their fruit. Mm -hmm. And so there's, yeah, there's evidences, I think, in our lives that God uses and, uh, you know, even things that we experience when it comes to our relationship with God that we can go back to and point to. And uh, I, I think, too, one of those things is that peace that God gives. Um, now, now we get away from it at times, but, you know, it's that peace that surpasses all understanding. We have this sense of calm and peace knowing God's in control. And I think it's that desire, too. I mean, part of the struggle I think that I had as a teenager and that I even spoke with teenagers is there's a worry that I do enough. You know, I want to be you know, a Christ follower. I, I want to be right before Jesus. Well, when I went to become a chaplain, I didn't know much about what chaplains do. And I remember saying at chaplain school near the end to a guy that I was going to school with, you know what, I, I just want to make sure I'm doing the right things and I want to be a good chaplain. And, and I was really just kind of concerned that I, I had no idea what I was doing. And he stopped me and he said, the fact that you have that concern tells me you're going to be a good chaplain because mm -hmm. you want to go and you want to do the right thing. And so if you're one of those who's wrestling with your faith and you're struggling and you're like, I want to be on Team Jesus, I, I want to follow him, but I don't know if I've done it. To me, that that's evidence that you, that you probably are already and that you're just doubting because, again, you're, you're forgetting that it's it's God's work and it's not your own. It's by grace that, that we're saved. And, uh, you know, again, look to some of those evidences that, you know, Josh was talking about and Ryan's mentioned as well. Um, you know, God is doing work in your life. Don't let the enemy rob you of that joy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you, that communication of someone saying like, yeah, I really want to, to be a follower. Like I, I almost feel like at that moment, he's grabbed your heart yeah. already. Um, you know, we try to really formulate salvation and, um, okay, well you even, I mean, even do the ABCs, right? Well, you got to first a admit B believe C confess D deny self, you know, whatever this things are. And those are all parts. I mean, that's all wrapped up in there. Um, uh, I just, the more, the older I get, and the longer I've been in ministry and heard people's stories and then have lived out my story and, 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 and understanding what God has done and is doing in my life more and more, I, I don't know if it's as clean and tidy 
as sometimes we want it to be so that we can say, yes, you are a believer. Or so someone can say, yes, I, because I, and anytime we move to that, the because I, we're, we're kind of missing the gospel anyways. It's, it's Jesus's call in our life. I, I've spent a lot of time over the last year or so in this new position I'm in, um, talking about what it means to follow Jesus. And um, we talk about that often in a class we do at the church, just that kind of trying to get back to the understanding of what it meant for the original disciples when Jesus looked at them and said, follow me. They, We don't have time to get into the whole thing, but they were seeing you know, Jesus was a respected rabbi in, in the synagogue at that point. All the rabbis would have gone around and looked at potential disciples and said, you follow me, you're going to be my disciple, which was a huge um, honor. And so Jesus shows up to these guys that have already aged out, if you will, of temple school, and they don't think they'll ever be disciples of a rabbi. They've missed out. But now Jesus says, you follow me. And that whole understanding was literally follow. You're going to learn by following him around physically. How does he... How does he minister? How does he teach? How does he talk? How does he handle the word? All these things. And that's what they were doing, becoming his disciple. And, and then Jesus says, go and make disciples, right? Mm -hmm. Teach them. And, and I think that entrance into being a Christian, being a believer, is that submission to, I want to follow him and learn. Yeah. Get up and do it. And... Um, and that's that idea of direction. It's like, okay, am I following him today? Am I following him tomorrow? Am I following like day by day? We're we're developing this relationship with him, and so things like I signed a card, or I got baptized, or I raised my hand, or at camp, or whatever, those things kind of melt away. And I just want to know, like, what are you doing right now? Like, mm -hmm. what's the path that you, you've been following, and where's your heart? And are you committed to following Jesus? And if you are, and you're doing it consistently, I like to say you you should have all kinds of assurance of of salvation, no matter what the story looked like. No, whether you were in jail because you were punching kittens and you met Jesus, and now you love kittens, you know, and He's changed your life, um, or it's I've always loved kittens, you know, whatever. That's a silly thing, but. Um, you you all if if that's kind of that trajectory man i think i think you could have so much more peace uh and assurance and i think if we encourage that kind of thoughtfulness mm -hmm. maybe less people would um doubt their faith i could be way off on that but i i feel like it's in a sense it's much simpler than what we make it out to be but in a whole other sense it's much more glorious than we give god credit for in salvation that we feel like we can put it into this box like this is if you've done this then yeah um yeah so that's like a soapbox i kind of get on from time to time uh, i just think there's something so much more simple there i think that people too can you know when when doubts do arise i think that people can be led into feeling guilt because they're having doubt but I, I would encourage people to say that, you know, just the fact, you know, kind of as Jeff was saying, and you were uh, pointing at that it's, you know, the fact that the conviction of your heart is to, you know, that you have some desire that you, you know, you're, you're like, I, I want to go, I want to follow Jesus. So, you know, have comfort in that, but also, you know, have this kind of solace in that it's natural for human, you know, for we're all human. We all have times of doubt. It's, you know, the, even the, the disciples at one time doubted, you know, it's not, um, it's not something to be ashamed of, but, you know, it's, it's something that you can take that experience and then in the end it can strengthen your faith. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. As, as a runner, there's this thing that goes on line for runners that are in the running community online all the time. Am I a real runner or not? And uh, people who maybe run like a mile a day and just getting started, they wonder if they're real runners because there's other runners that are running marathons and all that. You know, the, the consistent messaging is, did you get out and run? Yeah, you're a runner. It doesn't matter if you ran one mile or 26 miles. If, if you're regularly getting out and trying to run, yes, you're a runner. How, how do you find out if you're not a runner? You don't run. And so the same with being a Christ follower, do you follow after Christ? Like, yeah, you, there, you may be a baby Christian or maybe may the most mature Christian out there, but, um, you know, 
it, it all starts somewhere. And then there are moments. Yeah, there are seasons. Like with running, there are going to be seasons where you're injured or whatever and, and you can't run. But you're going to pursue it and get back into it if you can. Same with any hobby. You can use this illustration. But with Jesus, yeah, there may be seasons in which you maybe take your eyes off and slip away, but you're going to be pulled back. At the end of the day, are you following Christ? If you're following after Christ, then don't doubt because you are Christ follower. Yeah, and if that's not valuable to you, then that's a that's a place to question. Yeah, right? and um, so so I, I hope that as we've shared our stories and talk about this, that that it has been encouraging um, to those of you watching and listening. Listen, if you have any, if you're doubting, if you're struggling, um, you can always reach out to us. Uh, you can um, send us messages uh, through. Instagram or TikTok or um, Facebook, you know, just just send us a DM. Um, and if we're in the area, uh, man, we if we need to, we'd even love to, to meet with you. Um, if you're not in the area, we'd love to help you get connected with someone that might be able to to have that conversation. I would say if you know somebody who loves the Lord and is seeking to follow Jesus, talk to them um, because people who know you well and have a Holy Spirit mindset will probably be able to give you some encouragement. Um, about about where you might be in that. But don't, don't ever hesitate to reach out to us. I know we're silly, we joke around, uh, but we love Jesus more than anything else, and we want to make sure you know him well also. Uh, thank you guys so much for, for joining with us uh, this week. We hope to uh, bring you an update on the bracket and the pickle name uh, when we get together next week. So make sure to jump on all the socials and comment. Please like and share. Um, and uh, help us get this good stuff out there. All right. Thanks again for joining us, and we will see you again next time. Please sit out.